Today, I'm going to update my VMware vCenter from version 7.03 to 8.0. This is today's lab setup. My vCenter server is installed on a VMware ESXi host, and this is a vCenter server appliance. The Windows client has full access to the vCenter server, and DNS must be resolved properly. We also need a temporary IP address in the same range. I will explain later why we need this temporary IP address. Before starting, please make sure to take a vCenter backup. If you don't know how to take a vCenter backup, check the card above for guidance. Now let's start. This is my vCenter server, and you can see the version is 7.0.3. The vCenter server update process works like this. First, deploy a new vCenter with version 8.0 and assign a temporary IP address to the new vCenter. Then, copy the old vCenter details and configuration to the new vCenter. After that, power down the old vCenter, assign the old vCenter IP to the new one, and release the temporary IP address. I have already downloaded the vCenter server 8.0 ISO file from Broadcom. First, you need to mount the downloaded ISO file to the CD-ROM and open it. Today, I will show you how to update from the GUI. So, open the UI installer. Now you need to select your computer OS. I am running this setup from a Windows client, so I will open the Win32 folder and run the installer. Now you have four options. This time, we are going to upgrade the vCenter server. So, select the Upgrade option. Now read the introduction. You can see the warning. If you have a vCenter with an external platform services controller, it is not supported in the new version. Click Next to continue. Now you have to read the End User License Agreement, acknowledge it, and click Next. In this page, you need to insert the details of the source vCenter. That means your current vCenter with version 7.0. Insert the IP address or FQDN and click Connect. After the connection completes, you need to insert the SSO username, password, and the vCenter appliance root password. If you don't know the vCenter root password, check the card above to learn how to reset it. Next, you need to insert the ESXi host details where the source vCenter server is installed. Insert the ESXi host IP address or FQDN then the username and password. Click Next to continue. Now you need to insert the new vCenter installation target details. In this lab, I will install the new vCenter server on the same ESXi host. So I will insert the same ESXi host IP address username, and password. Click Next and accept the certificate warning. Now you need to insert the target vCenter details. Insert the vCenter VM name, root password, and confirm the root password. In this stage, we need to select the deployment size. In this lab, I will select Tiny as the deployment size and large as the storage size. According to the table, you can select a deployment size that matches your environment. Click Next to continue. Now, select the data store for the installation. I have selected Data Store 1 and enabled Thin Disk Mode, then clicked Next to continue. Next, you need to configure the network settings. Select the Network, IP Version, and IP Assignment Mode. I will not change these because my environment matches the default values. 
Then insert the temporary IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server IP address, and click Next. Finally, review the settings and click Finish. Now you can see the new vCenter deployment has started. This is called Stage 1. As I explained earlier, in Stage 1 the new vCenter is deployed with the temporary IP address, and in Stage 2 the old vCenter configuration is copied to the new one. Wait until the new vCenter deployment completes. After Stage 1 completes, click Continue to proceed to Stage 2. In Stage 2, click Next to continue from the Introduction page. Now you can see the pre-upgrade check is running. Wait until the pre-upgrade check completes. I got the result of the pre-upgrade check, and I did not have any alerts. There were only warnings, so we can continue the upgrade. Click Close, and now you need to select which data needs to be copied from the old vCenter to the new vCenter. In this demo, I will select Option 1, but if you need to copy other data as well, you can select other options. Click Next to continue. You can choose to join the VMware Customer Experience Program according to your preference, and click Next. Finally, verify the details and click Next. At this stage, I remind you again, take a vCenter backup before proceeding. Now you get the warning again. The source vCenter will shut down and you will lose access to the vCenter during this time. Click OK to start the process. Wait until all data is copied to the new vCenter. After completion, click Close. Now you can log into the vCenter and you will see the version is updated to 8.0. And that's it. My vCenter has been successfully upgraded from version 7.03 to 8.0. Now it's running smoothly on the latest release. Thanks for watching.